we're taking a look at defensive systems that keep you alive. The radar warning set, countermeasures and ejection seat. Before you take off, be sure to remove the ejection safety pin from our seat by clicking and dragging it away. Otherwise you're going to find the ejection system inoperable at an inopportune moment. Press Ctrl E three times, or click the ejection grab handle to eject. The Spanish F1CE diverges from the French variant, featuring two countermeasure buckets under the tail instead of carrying countermeasure pods. Each bucket can hold up to 15 flares, or 30 chaff, which can be configured in the rearming screen, totaling a maximum of 60 chaff only, or 30 flares only, or you could go for a 30-15 split which is most common. The countermeasure release button is located on the left hand wall. Beside our HUD site is the countermeasures panel. On the top of the unit we've got the countermeasures selector, left for chaff, middle for both, and right for flares only, controlling what will drop with each press of the countermeasures release button. The program knob below allows us to power the system, cycling through off, single countermeasure which releases one of our selected per press, multi which drops a pre-configured multiple, or program which runs the multiple several times. These are programmed in the mission editor, under additional properties, on our aircraft. For example, setting a chaff burst count of 3, interval of 0.1, salvo of 4, and salvo interval of 2 will result in the following. With multiple selected, we'll drop a burst of 3 chaff over 0.3 seconds. In program, we will drop a burst of 3 chaff in 0.3 seconds, and then wait 2 seconds, and then repeat 3 more times. In the second example, setting a flare burst count of 4 and interval of 3 seconds, we're going to drop 1 flare every 3 seconds, 4 times for one press of the countermeasures button. Selecting program will run the same as multiple as flares do not support the program mode, lacking a repeating salvo option. You can combine both chaff and flares in multiple and program modes, effectively running their own individual release settings at the same time when you have both selected. Below the programming we've got the counters, which reflect how many countermeasures of each type we have on board. After you've rearmed and the countermeasure system is powered, don't forget to click on the counter push button to manually set them to reflect what you've got loaded. We'll see these increment downwards as we deploy countermeasures. As we run out, the counter will roll over to 99. Finally, we've the emergency countermeasures jettison switch, which dumps all our flares, useful as a preventative measure to avoid potential fires during emergencies. Deploy chaff against radar threats and flares against heat-seeking missiles. Be careful how you manage your limited supply of flares, and avoid lingering in a dangerous area. And finally we've our radar warning receiver set, which detects radar emissions 360 degrees around us, although it has a blind spot above and below the aircraft. On the RWR panel itself we have an aircraft symbol and four directional arrows, which will illuminate in the direction of the detected radars relative to our aircraft. If the detected radar is between two cardinal positions, two sides will illuminate, giving us directional accuracy to within 45 degrees. The RWR does not distinguish between multiple radars, instead it filters to only the strongest radar signal which is not necessarily the closest. As a result, it's entirely possible you're being observed by multiple radars not shown on the RWR panel. Additionally, our RWR cannot distinguish between air and ground sources, nor friendly radars, providing us limited situational awareness versus modern systems, so incorporate your own situational awareness and do not entirely rely on the RWR panel. On the bottom we have the test switch and the brightness dial for the panel. Along the top we have the fret type lights, pulse modulated radar lock, track while scan lock, and continuous wave. When we detect a radar in search mode, only the directional light will illuminate. When you're locked up by a radar, either the pulse modulated or track while scan warning will come up. This usually indicates a missile will be coming your way shortly. Pulse modulated will illuminate for most threats when locking you, whilst TWS will illuminate when an aircraft has tagged you in track while scan. And finally we have continuous wave, which tells us we've got a radar in guidance mode, and that a missile is homing in on us. Active radar guided missiles will also give you a constant wave warning when they lock onto you. Not all radars have the courtesy to lock you before launching however, so it's entirely possible that the first active warning you receive is a missile tracking. In addition, we're going to hear tones for each of these states. Now I'm afraid, this is where we've got to discuss the early access launch issues. The behaviour described is correct as it will be in a future update, for now however the RWR does not function this way. It will display directions for all radars, without filtering to the strongest, making it impossible to tell a launch direction in a busy environment and the sounds are placeholders for the moment. 
Hopefully the described behaviour will be implemented soon. That's it for defensive systems built into the aircraft. I hope you enjoyed, and take care.